Coach Jeannie here at the Actor Scene. So let's talk about audition instructions. So casting directors give so many instructions. You wanna make sure you read them all because if you don't follow all of them, you may look slightly amateur or unprofessional, all right? So first things first, read all the instructions before you begin. Literal instructions that you definitely want to follow are, do you want the clips on separate files or all together? Labeling instructions, right? If they definitely ask for two takes, send the two, but it's not necessary unless you can definitely make two different performances. Most auditions require a slate. Make sure you're only saying what they ask for. A lot of times actors end up adding all this extra stuff that they're used to saying in other auditions, but if this casting director is not asking for that information, simply don't say it. Sometimes they may ask for submission notes. So normally this is something you might find on Actors Access. There's a little text box where you can add things like your height, location, do you have any conflicts, etc. Only certain casting directors ask for this, but if they don't ask for any, you don't need to add any. <laughs> so now you have your script and you're noticing there are some actions that your character has to perform. Whether that is passing something to someone, looking at someone who just walked in a room, fighting, kissing, maybe they fell down, okay? You still want to try your best to perform these actions for your frame, okay? Now, if you see something that says she passes this to someone, definitely do the motion. It takes some practice to figure out where your eye should be exactly, but you never wanna truly look down. Down for a taped audition is about chest level far away from you. Okay, so if you're passing something to someone or if someone is passing it to you, you can look at that chest level and receive it or pass it. It is not necessary to truly use a prop here unless it just makes you act a little bit more naturally having something in your hand because we won't actually see it since your frame cuts off about here, okay? But definitely do those motions. If it says that someone was beat up <laughs> and fell, we can't truly lose you off of the frame, but what you can do is do a big stumble. Sometimes I've even seen people end up stumbling to the wall behind them. If your lighting is fine, you can do that. <laughs> but you do wanna make sure that you have the actions that are listed there. Now there are some things that you don't have to take too literally. So for example, if it says crying on cue, okay? Or they start crying on this line. You don't have to force a cry because I'm telling you it will be obvious you're forcing a cry. 100% they will know you are forcing a cry. <laughs> so what you want to do instead is just make sure that you are connecting to what that character would be feeling at that line. If you look like you are almost crying or trying not to, that will probably be a more powerful performance than forcing a cry. Because in reality, we don't want to show off our tears. In reality, we don't want to be vulnerable. We actually want to hide that we're crying, right? So your performance will be a lot more powerful. Think about that. Now let's say something like kissing in a scene or fighting in a scene. You don't have to bring a person into your audition. I promise you, you do not. <laughs> but, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> please don't. <laughs> so what you're going to do is really mimic the feeling behind it and try the best for your physicality as well. So for example, if you are hitting someone or something, you want to imagine as if they are right here in front of you while still maintaining your eye line, okay? If you are hitting someone, truly do the force of the hits instead of something really light. It's not gonna look natural. If you are kissing someone, you don't have to bring someone in here, but still imagine them right in front of you. Give that feeling in your face of how it feels right when it's about to happen, okay? You can slightly lean in and have a lean back and have that feeling of what it's like after it actually happened. Think about how this character feels about the person they're about to kiss. Do they like them? Is it something they've been waiting for for a long time? Let's say that in your expression. Just to clarify, don't actually kiss the air. Casting directors don't want to see what that looks like when you're just kissing the air, making kissing, you know, mouths and noises and all that good stuff. It's how are you approaching it and how are you receiving it once it's done. I personally think that it's important that we don't lose you in frame at any point during your audition. 
So if your character has to walk in and out, it's listed on there for a reason. They want to see how your environment, your situation, your communication affected you. A lot of times, actors end up starting with a blank wall before they walk in and walk in from the side. If you walk in completely profile, we can't really see your facial expressions and how it feels when you walk in. When you're walking into your scene partner, you feel something about them. You may be surprised to see them, you might be happy to see them, you may be angry to see them. We need to see that. So instead of walking in completely from the side, I recommend being already in frame and kind of doing an angle in. A little trick you can do is keep one foot where it's going to land, put the other one behind you, this is now going to be your walk-in. It gives you about two seconds to react to the person you're seeing when you come in, to your environment. We get to see your expressions. Walking out. <laughs> Normally this happens at the end of a scene. Again, don't rush to leave. What you can do is hold your moment after, which is going to be what your character feels at the end what is going through their mind. It doesn't have to be any longer than two seconds, but you don't just want to leave. You're still an actor, you're still performing even after your lines are done. So keep acting for two more seconds, <laughs> then walk out. Again, I think it's more powerful to walk towards the camera on either side, so that way as you are leaving, we'll see your face and how this is affecting you. So you're still performing as you're walking out instead of completely leaving that way and then we end up with a blank wall. So if you're unsure about what to do for your audition, you have so many actions listed on there, so many instructions, come prepare to a taping here. We'll guide you through it step by step and we'll make sure you're turning in exactly what they're asking.